John to John likes waiting. I hey, see John. he wants to get John. here at exactly. He doesn't want to be early. No. John, you see that three people, four. You got to form Yeah, up. so let's get started. Um, Katie, are you there? We can't see the people in the um, Zoom call. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're going to get started. Welcome, everyone. Happy hot and humid Monday. Um, can everybody hear this on the Zoom? Okay, good. All right, let's get started. Call the meeting to order. Is there public comment for items not currently on the agenda? All right. Changes or additions? I did have one addition. Um, there was some slight damage done to the exterior of the town hall when somebody was doing some weed whacking and things. So we can either, we can take it up under other business, but I'm going to Do you know that the nature of the damage was by chance? Oh, John's gone. It's, it's minimal. Was it like the foam insulation or something? Or? It's paint, chipped paint. Oh. Like somebody hit it with a weed whacker kind of oh, thing. Okay. Right. We have, it's not just old business, it's new business. Yep. I have some old business when we get to that, just FYI, in terms of time. Okay, you want to tell us what it is? So we um, just, I have some amendments that we discussed about the July 12th minutes. Um, I want to loop back on the enhancement request for ECCT. Uh, I want to tell you about a, guys about a folder I set up. Um, I want to, I'm wondering what we're thinking about as masks inside is coming back into yep. play. Style. Yep. Mm -hmm. I know, it's coming back, sadly. Yep. yep. We and we knew that was going to happen. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I have the warrants here to send around for review and signing. And town office, welcome, Jeremy, our newly elected town clerk. Thank you. Thanks for coming and being so great to work with already. He's the first male clerk since 1960. Yep, when he was husband was a clerk. <clears throat> so, take it away. You, might, you wanted to give us an update, maybe yep. just tell us how things are going. Well, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate the invite. Um, I uh, have been learning a lot on the job. I got elected June 30th, so it's been a month. Um, Prior to that, I was able to um, spend a bunch of time. Uh, well, first of all, for anybody who doesn't know me, I think everyone knows me if there's anyone on the web. My name is Jeremy Weiss. Um, I'm the new town clerk. Um, I did spend a few weeks uh, coming in and working with Judy and watching her and her routine and just seeing the goings-ons of the office and asking a lot of questions, uh, hoping that I would be elected. Um, and thankfully, I was. Um, so that's helpful. I just want to say, um, coming in, I have to just give a public shout out to all of our amazing clerks that we've had prior to me coming here, from Eva Morse to Donna Fitch to Judy Robert. Um, I have come into the, the office um, and it's well functioning. There are systems in place. It's organized. Um, so that has been a huge um, boon for me to be able to hit the ground running and be able to really start to learn the job and have um, the very opposite of a de disaster or a high functioning office to step into. So that's been really great. Um, since I won election, the first thing I did was appoint Barbara Butler as my assistant for the next year. She's absolutely been invaluable. Um, Barbara is um, just has an incredible institutional knowledge about what's going on. She um, just just has a great rapport with everyone that comes into the building, and I really have been grateful and lucky to have a, an incredible assistant to be able to inherit in some ways to the job. Um, the hours have maintained the same, and I'm going to keep the same hours, Monday through Thursday, 8 to 4. Um, we're by appointment only. 
Uh, we currently have a policy of one person in the vault at a time, so I'm basically taking um, um, calls from researchers and scheduling appointments for people who want to come and research in the vault. Um, is it really busy with that, making appointments and people coming in? It has been busy to some extent. I think also with the immense amount of resources that have gone into digitizing records, um, that combined with just helping educate uh, attorneys and other researchers that those are resources that can be found online, uh, I think has helped in a lot of ways. But there are still a lot of people who want to actually put their hand on the document. They want to photocopy that thing. They want the whole deal. Um, and that's great. And, that, and so in, in essence, like, you know, we're open for business for that and people can come and make appointments and have access to the vault. Um, I guess all, what I really wanted to just discuss were my three priorities coming up um, and maybe some things that I'm going to be seeking down the road. Um, the first priority is uh, removing the shipping container from in front of this, our beautiful office. The shipping container was a, ca a carryover from the, all the construction that happened here. Uh, there's essentially some, some office supplies, some junk, and some documents that need to be destroyed. Um, the, that is essentially waiting on um, a records retention policy that I'm currently working on. I have it in a draft form. Um, I'm working with Sandra on the document pieces that are her, the business function and making sure that, because she knows better than myself, um, what the auditors need essentially and what will make them happy and I want her to be happy so that they're happy. So working on the policy and it's, um, it's close and then once that's in place I can remove that um, storage unit at 75 bucks a month and let it go live somewhere else. Yeah. Who does it, who, whose storage unit is it? Uh, it's Hold up. Hold up. Yeah. So I would like to, that to go away. That's going to happen in fairly short. Yeah, it seems like it's time for it to it's time. go away. It's time. Definitely gonna and you'll let us know. Change the aesthetic. The record retention policy, you'll let us know yeah. when that's when yep. you're good. Yep, I will, um, I will absolutely come and um, give you guys uh, an update on that when we're, I have a few policies that I'm working on and when I get to that point I will definitely, it'll be one of these updates where yeah. I'll come and I'll just, I'll bring them, we can talk about them. Okay. Yep. Um, the second priority is just setting the vault up for success for the next 20 or 25 years. Um, I am out of room in that vault. Currently, uh, for anyone who has been in the vault recently, uh, there's no room for me to put land record book number 57. Um, there's so much stuff in there. There are old records. I have seven banker boxes of student um, census forms and things going all the way back to the 1900s that live currently in extra space in the bathroom because there's no room in the vault. Um, so one of the things that I'm going to do is hopefully work with the Historical Society and other stakeholders to be able to uh, find homes for some of these things. Some of the things are beautiful quilts. I have cannonballs that came from the bottom of Number 10 Pond. I have framed beautiful pictures that someday I would love to see on the wall at the Memorial Hall when that gets finished. So I think these are things that are obviously very important. Um, they're cultural artifacts, they're a part of our callous history, and they should be preserved. Um, but they probably can't, some of them can't live in the vault forever. Mm -hmm. And so, at some point in the, in, you know, in the next few years, um, hopefully we can work with the Historical Society and others to be able to perhaps d display some of those things here. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, and I guess the third piece would be funds for further preservation and digitization of our records. Um, one of the things that I will be coming to the board to talk about, hopefully, is seeking some ARPA funds when ARPA funds are going around and there's a discussion there. Mm -hmm. There's, um, it's a pretty substantial pot of money and some of those funds perhaps could be used, could serve our town to further digitize our records. Right now, I think we're up to book 23. 
My goal is to eventually digitize every land record that we have. Mm -hmm. um, many of the very old documents aren't getting any better, and so it might be a good time to try to preserve those in some other manner than just microfiche. Yeah. When you say up to book 53, do you mean back to? Back. No, yeah. we're at book 23. So we're, we're digitized from, we're in 56 currently. Yeah. We're digitized all the way to book 23. Yeah, that's what, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. So okay. further, yeah, Council, continuing yeah. that. What year is book 23 about? I don't know. Uh -huh. It's, uh, would have to be in the 60s, I think. Okay. So pretty far back. Yes. Um, and everything that's digitized is available on pots. Yes. That's important. Mm -hmm. I current, <laughs> yeah. I have a restoration and preservation fund. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a law enacted um, that allowed the town clerk to take $4 out of every $15 from recording fees to mm -hmm. record land documents. We currently have a balance of $14,000 $14,546 in that fund. Nice. Um, to that end, I'm going to be utilizing some of those funds to continue the effort to digitize. Mm -hmm. um, I also um, would like to... And that's through COTS, right? Yes. That's through COTS. Yeah. Um, that's through COTS. Um, one of the things that is lacking currently are really good record keeping around the cemeteries, the cemetery plots. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be reaching out to the cemetery commission. Um, Nemrick has a very good program that uh, many other towns use to help organize a card system. And I'm going to be seeking to speak to them about yeah. um, trying to get something like that going. Good. Yeah, that's been needing to happen for a while. And um, other than that, I think we've, you know, I've been able to hit the ground running. I have been recording land documents. Um, and right now I'm kind of in observation mode and just trying to, rather than come into the situation and just immediately look for what needs to get changed, I, my style is more to just observe and see how things are working and how things are functioning, take that time and then identify where there are problems yeah. and then work from there. Yeah, and I like that style. Work with stakeholders and other people who have who have an interest in that. Now what about um, people call, calling and not wanting to come in and then how much time do you have to spend doing their research and all that stuff? How time consuming is that? It's been, lately it's been enormously time consuming. It's actually been probably the bulk of what I've been doing is actually just dealing with email and requests from realtors, from attorneys, from all sorts of folks. The practice in the past has been uh, to assist people in research, um, it's a burden. It's a huge burden. And actually, beyond that, I, I believe that the town and myself are carrying liability if I'm helping people pull deeds uh, and I miss something or they're relying on right. my knowledge and there's something that wasn't recorded properly or something's missing from the record. So what are you, you going to try to change that and tell people you're not working for them, that you're working for the town? Um, yeah, you can answer the question and okay. I have a suggestion. Uh, I'm working on a policy right now. Most town clerks actually do not do research. Okay, that's what um, I wanted to know. So I think it's trying to find a balance between helping our local townspeople, some of whom shouldn't have to hire an attorney to get their deed. Right, um, that I can see. But the opposite side of that is I shouldn't be, you know, Quasi acting basically as someone's attorney when they're doing, or um, perhaps they're doing it for sale by owner and they don't want to pay someone to actually do that research for right. them. Right. Well, I think that that's. So there's a balance. I think some of this may be built up to this because when COVID was first kicked in, yeah. we were like, nobody's coming in. Don't come in, we'll give it to you. Right. So I think that yeah. maybe some attorneys and whoever else, land, real estate people, maybe found out how nice it was that they didn't have to send a staff person in or they didn't have to come in themselves. But, you know, you're not, we're not paying you to be their assistant. Right. And I it is, it's been, vol vol it's been a lot of requests. So you were coming on a policy, okay, yeah. good. I think, in my experience, it's, it's a mixed bag. Even towns whose policy is not to, well, if I, if I know exactly what deed I need, 
you know, they'll pull it and send it, which is different, you mm. know, because you're at least you're not, you know, you don't have to do the research. You're just pulling something. Yeah. Um, I it on on the liability. I would suggest that we ask Jim to craft some language that Jeremy can, because yeah. there maybe there's always going to be times. You know, if you're even if you're mm -hmm. helping a townsperson. Um, you know, the point you were making earlier, you know, people think they have one deed and you find out they have three. And then they want to know which one yeah. is the right one. And, you know, next thing you know, you're answering questions and you're out of, like, where you want it to be. So anyway, so having some language that is basically disclaimer language, mm -hmm. saying that you're not their attorney, that you have pulled the material they requested and you're, you know, the town cannot be held liable mm -hmm. for blah, 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 blah. May be helpful to just have put in an email. And to be clear, I do have draft language, and it, and it would be, the policy would be um, either you have the book and page, um, or if you're a townsperson and you come and you're trying to find your deed, uh, I can provide the card file, and I can provide a printout of everything that's in COTS, and then they can say, okay, that's the one that I want, and that's the one, and then I can print. Right. And it won't be like, you're on your own, good luck, but it'll be, right. how there's can a, I help you? There's a balance. There's a balance, there's, there's a balance and I'm yep. sure that you can find that balance. Yeah. Uh, yep. I do think it would be a good idea, as Sharon said, to, if you had a sheet of paper that you could just attach. You know, if you're mailing stuff to people or providing it, just a sheet saying, I'm not your attorney, we're providing this as, right. a, as a... I think that's a good idea. If you're a, involved in a land transaction, it, you know, the best way yeah, to go is to hire an attorney. Yeah, well, I'm just, whatever Jim yep. thinks, yeah. I think it yeah. would yeah. be good. It's smart, just have a standard response. A standard, well, it's yeah. just a piece of paper that's stuck on whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, the, mo like, the truly standard response from my perspective is when someone provides me with a book and page, that is a standard um, request for information. I mean, that's, right. that's, that's about as basic as it gets in right. terms of a, a request for information. Because then you're doing, giving them exactly yep. what they requested. Yep. These are the things that you specifically asked for. Here they are. Yeah. yeah. And it's very efficient at that point to pull them and send them. Um, it, it's just as easy if someone calls or emails um, to be able to pull those things and now when have you, them available. If an attorney or a real estate person call and ask you, do you direct them to use the COTS system to check to see if it's online and they can just print it? Um, it almost definitely is online. It's, it's online. I think a lot of the attorneys that have come in, I, I've had a number of attorneys recently who made an appointment for maybe an hour or two and came in and realized, oh wow, this stuff really is all online and it was pretty quick and we just kind of printed everything up and they were on their way. So and know. so, yeah, some of them, um, you know, perhaps some of it is just learning curve. Yeah, a little learning curve, and, I, and I've had a couple who I was like, hey, check this out, there's another way to go at this, and they're like, oh, it's all over here. And so that's been, part of it is just educational, mm -hmm. and I think as more towns start just digitizing everything, and again, like everything that's going in the book now is all run through a scanner, it's all digitized from the, from the outset now. So oh, that's handy. we're building that library online, yeah. and people are getting more comfortable with it, and I think part of the policy is going to be really just one of just talking with people and encouraging them to mm -hmm. use the online resources that we have. Yep. And right now we don't have maps online. Why? Because they take up a lot of space. I think they take a long time to download. Yeah. Or there's some issue with it. There, yeah, that's been a problem. Well, there's certain, like if you need tax information for your attorney and you're trying to close, um, there's, that stuff is not available online right now. So there are reasons to reach out still, plenty yeah. of reasons, but mm -hmm. perhaps if we can reduce some of the flow, then it will make it much more manageable is, for me. Is getting the tax, the tax bills are something that a lot of towns do have mm -hmm. them online. Are we moving in that direction? We are. I've okay. been in, um, speaking with Nemeric, which has a good system yeah. that can basically place all of the tax bills online redacted. So if you're anybody who needs that information, that's all the realtors. Sometimes it's just people who need a reminder of what the final number is or what you know what the number is. Um, What's redacted? Redacted meaning that the state payments are taken out. Those are okay. considered confidential information unless it's being used by an attorney or right. some you know title right. search or something like that where they they need the yeah. information to close. Right. Jeremy, based on your income, so. A couple of other 
things. Um, we have heard, and I believe you have, of interest in Saturday hours. Do you have a plan? And, and there's, among certain folks, um, the sentiment that that was something they thought you, you were excited about offering. Uh, so I wonder if that's on your mind at some point, maybe a once a month a Saturday morning so people can come in on Saturdays. Currently I don't have any plans to open on Saturday. I did talk when I was initially talking with folks and said I was open to the conversation. Okay. Um, the more that I talk about it, I believe uh, Donna did that and maybe Judy too, no one showed up. Right, exactly. Um, beyond that, I knew that used to do. Is Eva did it, and Eva was yeah. in, it was in Eva's home, right. and I think that that's different. Yeah. Um, His, and historically, Saturdays have not been. Yeah. Well, and you also said by appointment. Right. So I am somebody, available by appointment. If somebody if called you and said, "Can I come in on Saturday?" If it's a situation that this is the only day that I can do it, I am absolutely available and can do that. Uh, I'm just concerned, and I know that other town clerks, um, Worcester town clerk, other town clerks have done that, and it's. Typically, been more about socializing than actually accessing records, and mm -hmm. um, so at this point, I'm going to just maintain the hours that have been around for a while. And right, but you're open to a point by appointment. Yep, if, if I think absolutely necessary. That's good. I think that's a reasonable answer for us to offer if we get yep. some feedback. Yeah. Um, the other question I have for you is uh, maybe what? Well, a month ago, couldn't have been much more than that. Um, we authorize payment for Judy to support you mm -hmm. through the end of September. Just, you know, wanting you to be aware that if, if you sense a need beyond that, mm -hmm. you'll come back and let us know. I will. And yeah. I do appreciate you authorizing that. It's been invaluable to have Judy mm -hmm. just a mile up the hill. Um, we've <coughs> had a number of conversations. It's just absolutely valuable to have her to bounce ideas off yeah. of. And there's a lot of things that are just, what's the story with this? Right, right. Why is it this way? Um, right, the history. There's a lot of different things where it's, I don't want to come in having any assumptions about why things are the way that they are. And it's sometimes good just to get the story. So that's been incredibly helpful to have her. Mm -hmm. So as far as updates go, do you want to just let us know when you want to come in for an update? Sandra, we have Sandra on, like, she's supposed to be on the last mm -hmm. Monday meeting of the month to go through the treasurer's report, but unless you feel a need to come in once a month or maybe quarterly. I think once a month seems fair. There's enough, I can't imagine that there wouldn't be anything to talk about, so. Okay. I think that's if. if for a while. For a while, yeah. yeah. And I think if that's, if she's, if, if you and know. If you need something sooner, holler and we can, you know, put yeah. you on the yeah. agenda. Yeah. yeah. Certainly. Okay, you're right. Madam Chair, I, I just wanted to uh, kind of go back to something I've raised and continue to raise over the last five years. And that is uh, our plans for further or better utilization of this space, which is primary intention is for municipal use, mm -hmm. the downstairs space. And one notion I brought up in trying to resolve uh, maybe a perceived dilemma if we had, you know, workspace for attorneys coming here rather than that congested office. And now with COVID, this is even pre-COVID. Yeah, discussion. that's right. Yep. And there was a little bit of um, pushback, and some of that pushback was the impossibility, the impossibility argument. Jeremy's brought up that we have a overflowing safe. Some of it is our artifacts, not directly related to clerk business, but um, I, I would like to select board at this point and going forward to give thought to putting a safe here somewhere um, in this building so that some records could be put over here. Maybe an attorney makes an appointment or attorneys, maybe they schedule appointments and then those records are then shuttled over here to put in that safe there. Um, so they have so stuff is available. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just thinking yeah. on my feet here, but um, this is a good space. It's a large space. It would take the pressure off that office. It would provide more area so people get distance and uh, it would allow for a fuller use of this space. And I just think I just mm -hmm. like to you're give making, that consideration. Maybe you can consider that when you're. Too. <laughs> yeah, when you're. John raises a good point, which we have discussed 
several times is how can we best utilize this space mm -hmm. for overflow, whether it's a public computer over here, so that you're not taking up space in the town office for a public computer. Yeah. I don't know, um, you know, how with the vault, how that would work for people coming in to do research, whether you could, you know, what, what well, might the process be? For instance, for instance, in our discussions, again, kind of try, frankly, I say this stuff probably more overt, uh, trying to defeat the impossibility arguments that, well, nobody would be there to watch and monitor records. As last I knew, we had an assistant clerk and a clerk, so we could have one person working here, one person working there. We could tie phone lines over here. Certainly, the internet could be interconnected. So, um, anyway, just one also just think, think, about think about it. in your yeah, towards in there. Right? Yeah, towards and as you're the, making considerations mm -hmm. of how things could flow differently or, or better. Your yeah. work it seems about congestion in your office for the last five or six years. So. I think a lot of that's been alleviated um, partially through requiring uh, appointments, having a policy around only one person in the vault. Mm -hmm. um, the listers are coming in on different days, um, and really people have been good about dropping off their tax checks in, this, in the drop box, mm -hmm. um, and just having um, I would heard stories about just like six deep of people coming and dropping off checks and mm -hmm. you know maybe that will come but I think people have been more apt to swing by and drop their check in the in the secure COVID. drop box. COVID has been good training for all of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I'm not sure that this actually split the tax yeah. check <coughs> the and so great. Right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure um, this that it's the same situation as it was Five years ago, in terms of the, I've heard about that where mm -hmm. you'd have two or three researchers in the vault. All the listers are there. Yeah. So the phone rings, and then someone comes in with a dog tag question. It's exactly. impossible to hear. Right. Uh, we haven't really experienced that okay. with this, and I think um, hopefully we'll reduce that even further just by trying to offer as many services as we can, where it's not necessarily a face to face is the right. only way to accomplish that business. Right. Okay, well, in order to move things along so we don't get too far behind schedule, is there um, anything else? I thank you all for, for the time. Yeah. And Congratulations. Yeah. It's good to see you all here. We're very happy to have you. Yeah. Welcome yeah. aboard. We had yeah. a consideration of a community bank resolution. So, right. we, so we're going to see Jeremy again, uh, first meeting in September? Once Whichever more? one, yeah, what, what, if you want it in the fur, or if you want it to have the same I'm thinking as that some, with, I'm thinking with Sandra. That sometimes Stuff might flow together between you and the mm -hmm. treasurer to do it like maybe on the same, that same works time, right. which yeah. would be yeah. the fourth Monday. Second one, okay. okay. Does he, is, how involved is, are you in, in the budget cycle element here outside of it at all? Or? Not yet. Uh, very, I mean, as far as involvement, I'm you, not very. You will be yet. to the yeah. extent of looking at the town office portion yeah. of the budget. Yeah. Okay, Sandra. So so it's just, and Sandra we're not quite at that cycle yet, but it's right now. It's more it's right around the helping an, we're helping answer tax bill questions and. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not. It's really. Okay. Yeah, cyclical. We'll be there pretty soon. So. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Do you hey, want to stay you, for this resolution? Okay. Sandra, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay. I I am here. Okay, so we're ready to take up this resolution, um, to, which is to add Jeremy as a signer on the bank account. Is that correct? Yes, this is uh, a simple resolution that the bank provided. It, it doesn't use language that exactly um, reflects a municipal organization, but this is their most um, clear resolution of this type and really all it d is designed to do is to make sure the select board knows what each one of these individuals listed at A, B, and C is authorized to do. And Katie, if you would scroll to page two, we, we will see exactly what those authorizations are. So I 
and A is Sandra, and Sandra is able to make deposits at two. Pandora's check uh, and um, deposit them at three, by the way, at two, it, it was to open an account. And also to sign uh, whatever documents are necessary at number four to, um, to make loans. And uh, I'm sure you remember that whenever we have a loan, uh, the select board is asked to sign and also the treasurer has to sign certain of those documents uh, as the bank dictates. Jeremy is B, so what we have with Jeremy is he is able to sign checks. So if something should happen to me and uh, we have checks that need to go out to vendors or paychecks, he is authorized to sign them. And C is Denise, and again, she is able to sign those loan documents as is required by the bank. They, they typically, you know, put in the name of the chair, put in the name of the treasurer in those multi-page um, loan documents, and away we go. So this is what this document, in all of its wonderful verbose nature, intends to do. Is this one? So the bank is the bank is just is, is basically asking you folks to uh, move the resolutions on this document. Uh, Jeremy and I have signed it. Denise would sign it uh, in front of a notary at the office, and then the document would be taken to Community Bank NA for filing. So is this a document that we've signed before, and now we're updating it because we're adding Jeremy, or is it entirely new to us? It's, we, did this um, when, we did this when Judy came on. This would yeah. Okay. As, as clerk. Okay. So the so so we're not doing anything new. We're just adding Jeremy again. Well, we're correct because Judy's not there, so we need to add Jeremy in her place. I take it in the process of doing that, we're eliminating Judy and you know old clerks, right? I mean that's simultaneous. If they are they're granted that authority, and that does that expire? Do we need to do anything to? Make it expire? Make it expire. Mm -hmm. It just expires when they're turned <coughs> Well, it also expires when a, this, this form replaces. When That's you file a new you. form with the bank, it replaces the old form. I just want to make sure of that. That's yeah. the word. Yeah. Yeah. That is correct. It supersedes the old form. Got it. Okay. Th this may sound picky, but if I were filling this form out, anything that's blank, like five through seven, I would put X's in there so that someone couldn't fill them in after the fact. I, can, I got you it right know. here, I can do that. Yeah, I mean, or a line through or something just so that. Just an A or something like that. Or N-A or something. You want me to, just, you want me to say N-A or P-A? N-A or so Put N-A because X could end up as a letter of the alphabet right. and they're yeah. using letter of the alphabet to okay. denote I've individuals. Been, yeah. I've our new zoning administrator might be Xavier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's right. Or Zelda. No, that's a Z. <laughs> okay, there's X's in all the blanks. Uh, NAs. I mean, not X's, NAs. 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 Okay. NAs. So moved. So moved. And I'll second. John will second. All right. Jeremy, do I need to come to the office and have you notarize this? No, I already brought everything. If you want to sign it now, I can go ahead and notarize it. Just take it. I don't. No, I can help so, it. You, both, you both can't get it. But yeah, that's... On, may I just point out on the notary page, yeah, which is the last page, the fourth page of this document, it, it this states that this resolution supersedes the resolution. That should be of 2018. So would you, Mark made a motion to approve the resolution. Would you like to make an amendment? We're missing page four. Yeah, we're missing page we four. We all have page up to page three four. <clears throat> and while we're in discussion, I, I want to just ask that in the future, we cease with the assumption that it's always the chair who stands in the shoes of the select board. More and more, I'm feeling like we're moving in the direction. Every time I get a document, it's already got the chair on it. We don't get the opportunity to talk about who 
we want there. Well, I'd like to amend it to add the vice chair. So we have two people from the select board. And can I just say that I don't control the documents that come through. They come through this right. way from right. everybody that sends documents. Right. I right. have no control over that. Right. It's, uh, it's something for all of us okay. to be aware of. Well, that's, it's, I'd like it's to an amendment on the floor, and I... Friendly amendment. Friendly amendment, I accept. And the vice chair to D. As D. As D, and that would and mean then, that, a, that, the, that number four would be A, a C, 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 and D. D. Yeah. And, and, you know... So it has to be changed. Yeah, it's still two signatures. Right. Yeah. And, and for my part, guys, I just want to say, I don't feel like it should even have to be a chair, vice chair. It could be right. Mark, because it's just still an It's easier. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Easier. Okay, yeah. So here, um, so do you want to come so around? So does Katie around? understand that? Do you want to come around and notarize? Do you want to notarize? Sure. Have you? I didn't sign it. I just signed in front of the notary. Whew. That is a game changer. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yep. <laughs> of course. Is, did I get the friendly amendment correct that John Brabant added a friendly amendment to add the vice chair's name to the form? Is that right just for a signature, or is the vice chair added as one of the people that Sandra itemized and what their roles and responsibilities are? That's correct. That's the, the, what you, the latter, the, the latter, latter of what you said. So, to be clear, Katie, the vice mm -hmm. chair is added to item three. It's on page two of four, line item three. So with A, B, A, B, and no, number yeah. No, I'm number sorry. Four. Yes, four. Number four. A, C, number four. I'm sorry. A, C, and D. A, C, and D. I'm sorry. So if all of us, so if... And D, so that would be Sharon Wynn under D. Yep. And she'd be on line four. Oh, yeah, I put it there. Yeah, right. just for, for Katie. She put Fanny. Fanny. Okay. I can, I can do that. Is it Fanny? Um, I know, I can um, All right, and so... And Mark, was... Mark accepted that as a friendly amendment. Can you pass that down to Sharon to sign, please? We, we didn't vote. We need to have all those in favor. Oh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Not to make things more complicated. <laughs> and then, John, if you could witness Sharon's signature. Make sure you put yours down this time. I put all of my names. <laughs> Sharon Fatten. Sharon Fatten. Oh. Is that your legal name? Fatten. Can we go and wrap this? Are you ready to wrap this?
1506. This is Martin Kempel and Kelly Sullivan, who have applied for a permit. The fees are all paid. Alfred's went out to review the site. If I may, um, Jeremy and I spoke on the phone today. It's actually 77. So it's not what, what is 77? 77 is Worcester Road. Oh, it so says 9 Calvary. I'm not sure why. So it's not 9 Calvary it's Road, it's 77 Worcester right. Road? So, there's an existing drive there, is there not? Uh, yes. And if it's not being relocated, why are we going to incur that permit for an existing drive? Be because that existing drive is not on this property. That existing driveway belongs to the... Oh, they're relocating the drive? Right. Yeah, but, but is that an existing drive or right of way? Not to that property. Not to the new, it's a new. So the guys can answer a little bit more better than that. But I, the way I understand it is that the existing road is, is on the property of the development behind it. Right, I understand that, but it's always been on that property. And it's just, I'm just curious. I'm not pushing back. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Well, I, when I right. first, when I don't Martin understand. and I first spoke, Seemed like when I first when we first talked, I said yes, no problem, you should be able to do that because it's an existing driver. Right. But then I went and looked at it with Marge uh, and another lady that owns property up in, in the back, and they said that the, that driveway is on their property. And also in the in the process of looking that that driveway is less safe. Than where he's got it. Put. Oh, it's being yeah. relocated. That's what it's being question. relocated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't understand. That. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just so, want to um, create a precedent where existing driveways now are, after the fact, getting curb cut yeah. permits, and there's also vested rights issues. Right. Well, I can crop up think that's an I don't want curb cut. I don't think it's, it's sort of a logging farm agriculture road. Um, no, it's a camp that's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. right. But the yeah. driveway is not on the property belongs to the camp. Right. It's a right of way. I think too, right? It's a deeded right of way for that camp is my understanding. Okay. So there could be, let, let's just say there was a deeded right of way right over here through that woods to a property out back. If someone bought that property out back and said, I would, I would that maybe that's been used historically to build a camp and somebody now wants to build a year-round house or convert the camp to a year-round house. We wouldn't then say we need a new curb cut because that's been there for 30 years this is before we require the curb cut permits. So that's just... Right. So you just, really, are We've you, had this discussion for over the last yeah. 20 years, 16 years since I've been here, that yeah. do we start going back? Because some people have come in with applications for stuff that's been there for 30 years, and we said, no, it's, right, it's grandfather, I don't like that existing. term, but There's it's existing. pre existing. Right. If we're pre improving pre -existing the curb cut requirement. Okay. Oh, okay. But if we're improving safety on this, I would disagree with that. I mean, if that, well, it, that's something that that's we separate. Have it, side, side it's separate from a legal, yeah. this is a legal document. We can say no, and then they can't use it, and I don't want. And that our decisions are appealable in mm -hmm. court. And so if someone has vested rights 
I don't want us by accident or by a shift in policy all of a sudden shifting in a direction where we're, we're now calling into question those vested rights. If a, there was a driveway, safe or not, the driveway down my barnyard that's been there for 40 years, if that's deemed unsafe, that's separate from a curb cut thing and we can have a conversation about making that safer by cutting trees. But to have that appealable or requiring a permit that then can be denied, you know, Rick, it's, it's kind of like a house that has a, an old farmhouse that has a septic system, they never had a septic system, but the house is there, and then we say, oh well, septic, you can't get a septic system there. So I need a point of clarification yeah. on that then. I mean, is this, I mean, is it actually, you know, eliminating that other access, and is that other access used? No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't know it was That's another new access. I'm saying my question was, if it's the existed, existing alignment, existing access point, and if it predates our curb cut point, right. Right. then that's not something that can, after the fact, be... Not without point. legislative action by us. And even then, we'd have to take into account vested rights. So that would right. be a discussion of something right. right. And we've had that conversation. Right. We yeah. won't do that. We're so not going back and replying curb cut for every drive. We've come up with a better location for a curb cut. It, that I didn't understand. Which is, which yeah. is yeah. monster yeah. property. It's, it's, it's a better, safer location. Yeah. <clears throat> And this logging or farming road goes out to the field, which is now developed. I'm not challenging. I just didn't understand. Well, no, I'm trying to let yeah. you understand yeah. what, what I know, which is yeah. you know uh, that that's a right of that it's a right. So it's a new road. it's a new access point, and it's a new location. They're looking for a curb cut in a very new yeah. access point, and that then that needs a permit. Can I can I get a clarification though on what you just said, Alfred? If I'm following the conversation we just had. So a new and safer curb cut to something, yay. But if the old one was, a, is it a, a right of way in an access point for two different properties, is that one going away or are we now gonna have two access points? One that we consider safer, but the other one is still viable it's pre-existing. Pre-existing. Right, um, but it's not, a, it's not a curb cut. It's not a legal curb cut. And I should add, it is our understanding that that is not deed, it was not written, written into the deed. It was just a, uh, something that was allowed, access was allowed by the other landowner. It was never formally, legally said that you uh, have in perpetuity. In fact, the, the landowners are themselves Question whether they want they question whether they would allow us to use that access point for legal purposes, liability reasons. Mm -hmm. If given that the sight lines are so poor there, mm -hmm. which is why we just said we don't want to get into any liability issues. It's not as far as they gave us. They told us it wasn't written. It wasn't deeded. Therefore, there's no uh, legal written document that says that that access is something that yeah. uh, we have a, a legal sure. right to. Yeah. You yeah. may or may not have a legal right, even though it's not deeded, but that's a complicated. Right. Right. I don't think that's the issue. Not that's not, not the issue we have. Right. I think we just, can we move this along? So I, I, I move the one of approval. So okay, so so we just, no, wait a minute. We need to get what has to happen. There is a site distance that meets 300 feet Towards Worcester, and then clearing some trees. And then, right. are we should yeah, Southford, yes, it does. Did you already say that? Yeah, the sign on there still. So. Uh, yes, it needs some okay. clearing. Brush clearing okay. trees. Okay. Uh, so, brush and brush and tree clearing. Is it tree clearing that needs to be viewed by the um, per, per tree? Per no, Rick, stop. The tree ward. Tree ward. Oh, there are a couple of sizable trees. Okay, so I'm going to say check with tree warden. Um, the good thing about this location is that it's, there's a power wire right in line where all this, where all this brush is. So okay. the power company They're going to take generally it. cleans that out anyways. So okay. if that happens, the site distance will be perfect. Okay. Be but in the meantime with the power company, if they don't do it, 
the landowner needs yeah, to make that's correct. clear. Right. And you'll right. direct them as to where, and you'll get the trees marked and contact the tree warden okay. to, yep. to look at the, yep. the trees that need to be cut. Right, before, before cutting is started. Okay, so then it meets, meets the B71 standards. Doesn't need a polymer because it's sort of right at the brow of the hill and the water's going to shed both okay, ways. That was my next question. You knew what I was going to ask. Lucky you. Well, they, are they these conditions you're writing into a the, the way this, the way this yeah, works is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the way this works is these are conditions in the permit. The permit gets recorded in the land records. So. So, did you make a motion? I, I simply this? made a motion to approve the curb cuts subject to the conditions recommended by the road commission. Okay, and I'll second that. Okay. All right, I'll send this around and everybody ready to vote? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, send that around for everybody to sign. And can I say, would you change the address? I noticed it's not on that sheet. I, I changed it to. Oh, here. I changed it on the right. application, but not the. So it's 77. Uh, while, we're, while we're in our transition, okay. Alfred, I heard from Stephanie. She's looking to hear from you on Chapin Road forest stuff. Looking to connect with you on that. I have a phone at the shop. She's welcome to call it. I can reach out to her. She said, she, apparently she sent you an email. So maybe you guys are using two different streams. Maybe look for an email from her. No, I'll give you her or cell, because she's not home all the time now. Yeah, she's not home much recently. I, I just didn't see an email. Yeah, we're just, the, the, we're just call and leave her a message on her phone. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, while the topic of Stephanie Kaplan is on the table, I believe that's her car over there. Kind of yeah, is that? It's been it, there for I know. Just what, a month now. Okay, what happened was I don't want to give out too much personal information, but her husband fell, broke his hip. She was on her way to the hospital, or on her way to his office to help him. He ended up in the hospital, and was in a nursing home. She's trying to make arrangements to get her car over to Shatney's, but her time has been limited between husband okay. and rehab. I don't personally have a problem with it. I just see a car there and it looks like hers and I was wondering yes. why it was there. Well, that's why. Okay. But that doesn't need to go on the record. Okay. Okay, we're going to take care of you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Okay. Yes, it's, yes, been, it's been approved by the taxpayers right. twice. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. <coughs> um, you got what? Four bids or three, three. bid? Three bids, and you. Your recommendation is for the for that particular the larger chip, correct? Yes. And is that the fifty-three thousand dollars? Yeah. Yes. And we have a fund. We have an we have a highway equipment fund. Mm -hmm. and, and, there, and if there are just for FYI, if we don't fully spend the approved highway budget from the previous year. Yeah. It rolls over. It rolls over. over. So that's why we. That's part of the reason why we have such a lot and of money. Also, and also because we had such a surplus of highway dollars at the end of the fiscal year that rolled over. That's what so said. so yeah. do we, <laughs> as to that fund, is Well, every, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Is that right? <laughs> every year when we adopt a budget, and then I'm going to stop asking for information. Uh, well, no, 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 no. This is what you need to do. Yeah. I'm glad you are. So when we adopt a budget, we have a highway fund, which is a sub uh, part of the budget, and we allocate a certain amount of money mm -hmm. in line with our capital. We think about yeah. this, that, and the yeah. other, and, yeah. and yeah. 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 All right. So this is in the capital budget, and you're recommending it. Okay. Well, hang on. Is so this I think ties to a question I have. It the capital budget will cover it. Which is different than saying it's in the capital budget. Does the capital budget actually enumerate purchase large yeah, purchases? It's enumerated a number, I think. It's a, it's it's a, a number. It's a, it's a number. number. Okay. But there was a separate vote right. so years before we voted on the chipper, um, per se, um, that said um, that there's uh, excess funds left at the end of the fiscal year rather than us the select board slushing the stuff around it. It will go into equipment, so and and that we do have the ability to spend it only on highway equipment purchases. Okay. Be it a truck, be it a track right. Right. So this is would be in addition to what was approved specifically for the chipper. Mm -hmm. I think we approved thirty-five. Yeah, thirty-five. Okay. We approved thirty or thirty-five. I think it's thirty-five. Yeah. So, um, so <coughs> thank you. And, and one more point on, to build on Mark's questions and then we can go back to this, but I think the difference you're starting to bread from us to Mark is capital capital budget versus capital plan. Yeah. And whether you know we can say that this is that there's money to pay for the chipper, yay, and then next week, oh <laughs> but we need this, this and this. So where does it all fit in the plan? So that's what I'm gonna want to hear from you, Alfred, is that the in the absence of an actual capital plan that we can afford the chipper that you're recommending and we're not going to get in a corner and need to find money for something else because we're not thinking and and so i actually thank you very much for all the work you guys did yes it was, in, it was in my neighborhood so i see i can do it everywhere but thank you um, and I thank you for using both graders to put them both to work. One's not sitting in the dooryard of the shop. That's awesome. But you, I think either at last meeting or the meeting before you mentioned that you, you're eyeing replacing one of the graders at some point. Is there urgency to that? I know you have concern. That just one's just the age. The, the Caterpillar has, has been our motor replaced, transmission replaced. So that's not urgent. Um, but it's, they're both the same year, uh, they're 22, 23 years old. Same hours? So, uh, close in hours, yes. So the reason I mention that is to get it on you guys' radar yep. because it's a huge Spence. pocket. It's a big yeah. money. We'll have to put that on the So I, you know, I definitely want to start putting some money aside for them okay. because we're looking at 300000 probably. Right. So and that's something we'd have a conversation, conversation at town meeting about. It's a big budget. It is. It's a big bring those. Right. Well, it's like it's it's really good. Good. Yeah. Now, if we have a truck blow up like we did, we might triage in between town meeting. We still get beat up for that, but we try. If we can defer, wait 
like this to tell me that's what we do on the big budget. For budget season, Alfred and I will have I'll build a capital plan. Predictive plan. That's great. That gives yeah. us a year by year. It'll show that depreciation. It'll show when all these expected retirements need to be. Mm -hmm. It'll show us our cash flow and what that means and how we can defer it. You know, probably say early, either early in retiring or greater, so we begin to stagger, mm -hmm. we'll be able to play with that. So we can impact our, and so we stagger these big expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Say, that's definitely on my radar. radar. Yeah. Yeah. And Sandra also put out an email saying that, you know, we have this truck payment to make out of this same pot of money, and there's still enough money to do that in addition to buying this truck. Yeah. So my only question then is, um, what I'm hearing, I just want to confirm it. It's not like by making this purchase, you're, you're leaving us without enough money to make something else that you really want to do, that you anticipate right. you have to do in the immediate future. Right. Okay. Yes. You got your question. We are in, fair, in really good shape financially, or I wouldn't be asking for yeah. uh, yeah. Well, we want to be looking at the big thing I see that's a, that's a wild card for us is that it's another job. If we start using that, that say the new used truck that we're buying, that's intended to be a right. But that's yeah. down the road. But yeah. I mean, we can't look into the future quite that well, clearly. It depends on how we handle right this. Now, what, I'm looking at, what I'm looking at right now is our roads are getting plugged up with brush. Yeah. yeah. No, I got no yeah. way to deal with it. Right. No, no way to do it okay. except for the more. We can have the discussion about a capital plan right. later. This I'm just, I'm, I'm reassured that it's happening. Yeah. That, that you're working on it. That's all. Yeah. Okay. And, so, and Alfred is telling us we're going to be fine. We're not going to get stuck if we spend money on this now. Right. Right. Well, we're still going to have a fair amount of money left over after paying for the payment for the, for the Western Star truck. Mm -hmm. And taking this out, we're still going to have. I forget what you know, the 60, 60, left. That's yeah. just enough for all of us to go to Rio together. You know? Well, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we can take the graders to Rio. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Actually, Rio is not the best place. No, the <laughs> <laughs> all right. So moving this along, um, Alfred's made a recommendation of which grader. Um, are chipper. there for which chipper? Chipper. 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 The chipper. So are there any questions about the model and what he's recommending? So I, I think I saw that that chipper had a, maybe the oil plate model is 75 horses, like you're going to upgrade it to what, 125? Uh, 145. 145. Katie, can you call up the quotes, please? Yeah, I, I can't find a darn quote now. Here, that I'm vaccinated. Yeah, so he's got the shit. <laughs> so, okay, like, the 35 uh, here, it's this one, one, right? Yeah, 10 inch chip. 14. Okay, here it is, John, on the screen. Yeah, you got it, my eyes. Oh, okay. I forgot you got do this one here. Yeah, so there, there was an upgrade to it, right? Yeah. To add the bigger motor. That's. Well, it's two different. It's, it's a bigger model. Well, I, I saw oh, a different 14, 15 in here. It had 75. Of the same machine. It's two different machines. Okay, because one of them, a 14, one's 15. 12, 15, and one's a 14, 15. Well, I saw a 14, 15 with a 75 horsepower motor on it. That's why I'm asking that. But you're recommending the 14, 15, right? With the 145. With the larger engine, right? With the larger engine, the heavier. Duty frame. It's got a winch on it so that it can be. You can move the locks up to it. Yeah. Pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it yeah. Oh yes, yeah, the winch. Right. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Which yeah. right there is going to save yeah. us the yeah. extra yeah. money we're spending. You know, because you know those guys are going to go and try to grab onto a tree and feed the whole thing in there. So how a chipper works, it wants to feed the whole tree. Mm -hmm. So two guys. Yeah, we can get that, and then the next thing you know, you got somebody with a horse with a sore back. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's her. Yeah. So this winch is worth the extra, and the difference is like sixteen thousand dollars between the two models that, yeah. that we looked at. And you said it had a life expectancy of twenty five. I'm thinking twenty five, thirty years. I mean, it's you know obviously there's going to be some maintenance. 
required in a moving park will. Um, but well, 25 or 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, more than 25 or 30 minutes. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm just going to, uh, just for purposes of discussion, to allow discussion, I'm just going to put a motion on the floor, okay? <coughs> and then we can have discussion. So I'll move the recommendation of the road commissioner that we buy. Mobark E. Beaver, 1415 Chipper. With the uh, addition of the larger engine and the, 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 winch. the winch, as recommended. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion, John? Well, what do you know about the engine six cylinder? What is that? Six cylinder what? Yeah, they're actually gas motors. Yeah, I see that. Um, everybody's going to gas now because of the tier four emissions. Uh -huh. And the machine that idles a lot, the emissions that the just chose oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why everybody's. So is that a Chevy or a Ford or a Mitsubishi? Uh, it didn't give me that. Yeah. Um, okay. But I am putting a lot of faith in the in the Moorbark because yeah. that's you know a lot of guys that I've talked to have them like them. Good. Other them. other towns have checked them. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. East Montpelier has a Moorbark. Um, talked to Guthrie extensively about this. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's the one that kind of changed me to the drum style versus the disc. Yeah. Because the drum is much easier to service. Mm -hmm. It's just one panel, you take it out, and in 10 minutes you're changing the blades. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the disc, you gotta flop the whole hood open, and, mm -hmm. and it's a lot harder to get to. Um, Great. So, because I was honestly thinking that a disc was gonna be better because I was looking at the price and price means a lot. But then when I start looking at the long term where we're out there working on it and trying to change blades, if I can change the blades in 15 minutes versus a half a day at the shop, that's going to be a huge savings yeah. over the life of this Does it come with an extra set of blades? I mean, you have to buy some? Uh, we'll probably have to buy them. I would, I would keep that in stock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Keep them in I'll beat them up yeah. and try to get whatever I can extra out. A free set of, you know. <laughs> yeah. so we'll tell them we'll, tell we'll buy it if we get a free set of blades thrown in. <laughs> <laughs> We're only six minutes behind if you want right now. Yeah. All right. All right. Is there, everybody ready to vote or yes. is there any further questions? I am. Thank you. Nice work. Your work. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Nice work. Recommendation. Nice work. Appreciate it. Yeah. Right. Nice work. All right. All, right. all so those in favor. One more thing you might. Hopefully this won't change my mind. But is this about the chip? Yes, uh, the chip. This this fourteen fifteen chipper won't be available to us until September. Oh, uh, that's right. So it's, it's, it's not this, this year. It's 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 this year, yeah. 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 It's it's next year. I thought you were going to say next, next year. Month. Well, that's not a big deal. Does that work with you? I mean, that's fast. fast. That's I mean, because that's when I would want to go after these trees in the fall when it starts cooling down. Right, and the leaves are before winter. Yeah. So that time will be good. Fine. I just wanted you to know that. Okay, I well, appreciate that. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank Thanks you. Out Thanks, Thanks, out. Thanks, Thanks out. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for doing all that homework and yeah. checking in with these cows. Yeah, yeah that was a lot of work. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't know how long this will take. We have a request by the Schultzes, which was also a request back in. 2012 to discontinue Town Highway 7 and we got entangled in the ancient road stuff and we put this on hold because it wasn't really an ancient road. So thanks to Gary and Jill, they reminded us about the fact that they would like this discontinued. There is a process and I think the documents, Katie, are in the folder. Um, there is a process and the first thing we have to do um, is make a motion to discontinue Town Highway 7 as described in the letter from Jill and Gary Schultz back in 2012 and then again via an email dated June 8. No, that's June 8, 2012. That's not the right one. They sent us a recent email. Yes, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, you saw that too? Yeah. I think, yeah, it's yeah. The, I think it's in the Google folder. 
Um, and then there's also minute searches from going back. But um, so they've contacted us twice. We kind of dropped July 13th. July 13th. <coughs> yeah. So it was July 13th of 21, and then June, January 1st of 2012. So the next step is. Um, we need to make a motion to act on the following, and a, 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 a motion could be, and I don't know if it's, Katie, if you scroll down, is the road discontinuance procedure in the folder? Pass a motion to initiate the process. I move to initiate the process to discontinue the town highway and set a time and date for examining the premises and hearing of the persons interested. Right, so in other words, we have to do a site visit. I'm just reading off the and yes. We walk the road from beginning to end. Beginning. Yeah. I second the motion. Okay. And we need to, did people bring calendars tonight? Or do people know when they might, because we have to contact the landowners and then there's a whole process um, of noticing the hearing and all those good things. It's like a regular notice for like um, a DRB or somebody wants to build the house. It's similar to flexible that. after this week, so. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is the trails committee involved at all? No, this isn't a trail. Well, they could be. Right? They could be. It's, it's a dead end. It's basically it goes into their yard to drive. Yeah, I know. Um, we talked about GAR Road making that into a trail, and Reed was going to get us some yeah. information. I'm I'm only asking because. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it's a is it does it I mean on the map it looks like it doesn't go anywhere. Right. But, well, we would obviously know. We would obviously notify. The trails committee. Okay. Right. That's that yeah. Relying on the Schultz email, recent email was flagged it according to the survey. There was a survey done by the Ancient Roads Committee okay. and they determined that it actually dead ended in their yard. And so they flagged it based on the boundaries that the Ancient Roads Committee determined. Right. Where, um, excuse me, where, John, where was this? The Schultz Road. Not from the county road. It's what? I'm sorry. It, it doesn't end in their yard. It ends at the cell phone of the cell phone car. It doesn't car. end on their property? No. Okay, well, they're saying that. So that's the reason for the sidewalk. So wait a minute. Yeah, and well, I think a problem with the sidewalk may be that it's very hard to follow the road after we pass their house. Although I don't know that because they don't really put anything. Well, they're going to have to. Well, they look we can't, we're doing, we can't consider discontinuing it without doing end to end sidewalk, and it needs right. to be no, literally end to end. I, I'm not opposing that, it's just uh, a warning. No, no, I know you're not. Yeah, they want to I, I, mean, I, I, I tried to find the road in the cellar hole and then follow it back mm -hmm. to their house site. Well, they might know. I'm sure Gary knows where that cellar hole is. Yeah, I'm sure he's owned that property since he's a yeah, child. The cellar hole so we done. have to give 30 days notice. Yes, right there, 30 days notice of the site visit, <laughs> um, certified mail, all those good things. So we need to pick so the we're already in September. So we can so let the trails committee September. know and the conservation commission. Oh yeah, absolutely. September is much better. And the question, I, maybe the thing to do is to check with Jill and Gary on their availability once we know what our availability is and give them some options. Um, do, do you know whose property it, it, that cellar hole is on, Reed? Or yeah, it's on... Um, Educated guess. It's, it's, it's called Lumberjack LLC. Lumber New Orleans, Louisiana. Lumberjack LLC in Louisiana. Yeah, 601 P-O-Y-D-R-A-S Street. Okay, so they so need you gotta, to give you notice. Say, you gotta say that again. <laughs> 601 what? 601 P. Yeah. A Y D R A S. Road? Street. Street. Sweet. Sweet. 
Yeah, Sweet 1855. Okay. So, and it's your Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, gotta get the zip. Yeah, yeah. New Orleans 70130. 70130 is the zip code. Yeah, it's, it's in the tax records. Yeah. Okay. But there's no phone number or email. Well, we'll send, we'll send them a hard copy, yeah. which we need to do anyways, even if we do an email, we need to follow the process, which is sending a hard copy. So, and just as a point of clarification, um, we should actually do our due diligence and attempt and try to locate that endpoint. That's our job. Um, but let's just say we go through the process and the select board determines that we want to discontinue it, that Lumberjack LLC continues to maintain its rights to access their property despite the discontinuance. It doesn't discontinue their rights or access. Right. So there are 20 properties along that. They can still maintain their historic rights of use. Right. So it doesn't yeah. change that. It just basically takes it off the town books. Right. right. It turns it into amazement. Well, we can't make it so people can't get to their property. Right. No. Well, and that's an example of going back to the earlier conversation where there wouldn't be a deed of right of way, but there is a legal right of way. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Clearly, clearly stated that clear right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we can make that clear in a decision if we get to that point. So, yeah. if you want to, <clears throat> it's going to take a little while to provide notice, right? Right. So how long? 30 minutes. We have no, no, no. Oh, to get to do the paperwork and stuff? Yeah. Probably start working on it next week. So, 30 days from next, from the end of next week is. The 20th, so that would be like the week of the 20th of September. Okay, so 20th of September. Sometime during, I mean, later in the week is probably, I mean, you may. The 20th is a Monday. Yeah, the 20th is the Monday. I mean, um, and not only that, it's also the 20th is, is it a select board meeting? No, it's not. Wednesdays are good. Um, Good job. Good job. Not for it depends sure. on depends on the Wednesday. Wednesday. Well, is it the kind of thing that we can do before a select board meeting? We could. I don't think we want to do that. Okay. I think it's going to be a Friday afternoon. Or yeah. Um, Particularly if it's hard to find. Sometimes we've done this on Saturday Saturday morning. Well, still. that's what I was thinking too. Is a Saturday morning. This is going to be hard to find. Saturday the twenty fifth. Um, Saturday the twenty fifth. There. I gotta be careful. What I just said. Uh -oh. so. What about October second? Well, let's not let's not choose. Do we have to decide? Oh, we do have to decide. We sort of have to decide. I wanted a couple of days yeah. to be. Well, as long as we have two people. Right. So yeah, I'm gonna I might not be able to go. Saturday to nine twenty five, or Saturday October two. And Rick, you should be healed up. Yeah, I'm going like that. Be better. <laughs> He's already mountain five. Right. He is. He's already doing stuff he's not supposed to. All right, and I guess maybe I should check with Gary and Jill first to make sure those dates, if they're going to be gone somewhere or something, it's not going to be helpful because we need them there. Yeah. Okay, so and that would be likely in the morning or? We would probably do it maybe like around 9. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Can, okay. I, can I make a comment? Yes, you can. Yes, you, you talked about. Um, there being a right of access if the road is thrown out. Um, if, but it's only if the planning landowner has all that, that that's the only way into the property. No. And that isn't. It's not true. That's what, what I read in the statutes. Well, yeah, I, don't, I don't agree. Okay. It's not, it's not what we come to learn. If you have. Um, Oh, if you've been using a town road to get to your property. Yeah, I mean, they have, they have no, I'm saying if you have been using a town road to get to your property, the town discontinuing that road does not change that in any way. It shifts the burden of maintenance to you and the other landowners that own the property over yeah. which the easement. No, but they, they haven't been using that. Right? But they, they, there was a historic level of use at some point, right? Somebody got to that foundation. They didn't drop in off the drone back in 1850. Right. Right? Okay. So since then, 
I used to be one of the owners of the land, so I know this. Um, its access has been from the Woodbury Mountain Road. So they haven't used that access. They haven't relied on that access. And it's not the only access that they have. That's going to be for them to argue. If you're saying them a notice and writing a letter of explanation, don't assume that they know that. Right. Right. Okay. And I, like Denise, I wouldn't imagine that the notice gets into that level of speculation no, about the law. It's, it's a. It's up to them it's to. A, it's facts, right? Right. Your, your neighbors have presented this request. The process is here's the date. Right. And they can this. they can bring up that whole issue. Right. Say so, no, we don't want to throw it up. We right. want that tower access. Right. right. They can you. they can do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. They have that, but we just need to decide if we want to get the ball. Do you need any any motion or anything? Or we? Well, you well, made I made a motion. Right, you made a motion. Um, did I get a second? I'll second. Second. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay. Second. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Right. And this is just to get the process started. Right. 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 Yeah. Just to get the process started. Okay, Denise. I, I, can I just have the floor for a minute? For um, to follow up on this discussion, what discussion? What we just we just yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're sort of done with it. But. Okay, but you asked me to investigate the procedures that the no. town needs to go through. Um, um, for no, GAR, we're, we're talking about GAR. We're talking about GAR. No, I wasn't talking about that. Yeah, you, it's in the minutes where you were going to do something. Anyway, you were concerned. About, about that's right. I want to let you know that I that I did some online research into the statutes and I felt very inadequate. Um, it, it really requires a lawyer to fully understand mm -hmm. what the uh, statutes mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I did I did uh, photocopy the the relevant pages. So as a point of clarification, we asked, you raised the question in our last meeting, three, that our concern, yeah. that was framed as a question, um, that your understanding or your concern was that if we uh, downgraded a class four road to a trail designation, that the, the width of the right of way became more constrained and when we gave up some white right of way with and I, I challenge that and I still yes, challenge well, that. Well you're right. It's it's it, the right of way is the same. I know it's right. Right. And and uh, I had never realized that until I looked Right. So that's what we asked you to investigate. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we already know this because we already went through yeah. this like yeah. fifty thousand right. times. I'm not here to waste your time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, I'm glad you brought it up. No, I'm not, you you brought it up and you said you would investigate it so we appreciate that. Thank you. And now now we all know. All right, so this is all agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. And by the way, so much. for Mark's benefit, we used to be head of the trails committee, and he was the guy that all the charge. For that, for that got all our trails in. He's he was, awesome. Yeah. He was, a go, he was a go to trails guy. When he says he's less than adequate, feeling less than adequate, don't believe him. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's more than adequate. He's awesome. <laughs> hey, Reed, is the, is the community trust? A 501c3? Yeah. It is. We it got 501c3 status. Yeah. What are you talking about? Something okay. else is on the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're talking about other things, all right? What the hell? Yeah. Um, She'll learn it when you can. Thanks. All right. Reed. Next up. Thanks, Reed. Thanks, Reed. Thank you, Reed. Yep. Cindy Kenneman Warren sent us or sent me an email which I forwarded to everybody that her services agreement that we had with her when she was working with us on the union stuff needs to be renewed. And we talked about it, and Cindy um, sent us an email about how much time it might take her to review and review the personnel policy. I think it's well worth yeah. the money to ask Cindy to work on the personnel policy. Yeah, that's on it. Yeah. Yeah. She said, I thought 15 hours sounded like 
Not that much. Well, maybe not enough. Yeah. So I think, you know, so we have it electronically so she doesn't have to start from scratch. Um, but then, you know, we want her to look at the contract or the union contract that we almost ratified and incorporate some of those things into the personnel policy. So I think we're going to have to get her on to join us for a meeting. Well, I think we should, yes, we should do that, but it might be worth having a conversation ourselves about what we actually want in the personnel policy with just a discussion so we can argue amongst ourselves before we... Task her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can do that. We can do that in, at another meeting. At another, at another meeting because, right. you know, we may not want exactly what was negotiated and we may want some other things mm -hmm. and well I think it's a good opportunity just to review because Rick and right. Mark weren't on the board then yep. and I think we need to take a look at what was really important to us at the time. Yeah. And and I think Cindy kind of knows right. sort of what that is, but we can reemphasize that we really this is what we really want to see in the changes to the personnel policy. Right. Is this the kind of thing where it would be worth to delegate to one of us? Not me, just because I'm new, but I think this uh, is to a make a recommendation to the board as to go through the contract. This is something we need to work collectively. I think right. we need right. to work on this collectively. Well, yes. Yes, collectively. But then one of us, as a point person with Cindy, because she sure. forgot, and what about, and help me understand again. Once we well, arrive at our list. Well, yeah, once we have our list. I think we need to have that discussion when we get to that point. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'd move that we approve Cindy for up to 20 hours, but she's not well, to begin the work until well, I think so this, task by this contract. Board. This contract doesn't get into the work that she's going to do. It's just to renew it. Okay. So we can use, okay. continue to use her. Okay. Then, so then this would be yeah. a we, motion to um, hire on an as need, needed basis. It's a service work to be performed. It's the same contract we signed when we hired her for the union contract stuff. Okay. So this is just a reauthorization okay. of the contract with R. H. Smith and Company. Um, which is where Cindy works. Okay, so moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Oh, we need to sign this. Well, but hang on. Um, we haven't approved it yet. So, so if we were to spend, let's say, 20 hours of Cindy's time. At 125. At 125. What I want to know is where is this going to come out? That's $2,500. So we have, this is unbudgeted. Well, I think that there's probably more in the budget under um, maybe professional services. Are we not, well, not? I think we have to take a look at the budget, but I think this is something we really, really, really need to get done. Gotta get this done. We do want to get this done. We've been talking about it. We I, just need to bite the bullet and do it. Well, uh, yes, so, I I agree with that. I do think it's one of the things that we could do ourselves if we if we put our minds to it. A couple, you know. I don't. I think we just let somebody do it. It's done this kind of stuff before. This but I do think it's a good question where the money's coming from. I don't know how we do this, but... We have a select board budget. We have personnel services, line items. We have... I don't, have my I don't know if those things are... Um, I think how much bandwidth are we going to have in the coming months? We're coming in the budget cycle pretty quickly. Right. No, so, I don't, I, I'm supportive yeah, of the hiring. Yeah. I just yeah. want to... I think it's a good question where the... Do we have at? I guess I'm just going to rephrase it. Or re it's not. Do we have that. adequate funds? <clears throat> well, we sign a contract, and if we don't, we don't. If we don't, right? You know, this is just. This is just. Well, we want to yeah. cover her that we're going to pay her. That's right. We her. we have we haven't started spending the money yet. So my notes say that the first step is for we for us to meet amongst ourselves and come up with a list of exactly what we want our personnel policy to to say. And at which point, to Mark's point, we will appoint a liaison to work with Cindy Maybe. to put those changes in place. Um, fascinating. And point number two is we have to figure out the budget. Okay. 
All right. This is really no different than the contract we have with our attorney, Jim. Right. Um, you know, if we don't. We right. used to have a, a retainer agreement right. where we just paid him regardless, and he said, you know, you guys would come out better on an hourly basis. So if we never call him, we never utilize him. Cost us nothing. It's a we, similar. No, we never had an actual retainer. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Where he, we uh, we had a we paid we had him a minimum. In, we had a certain amount of money. We paid him every month. But didn't we get money back when we didn't use it? He, no. No. Okay. No. He right. he. I think actually might have on his own initiative saying he I did. feel that okay, I'm charging you because I haven't you haven't utilized the me. The contract and, really was a retainer. Contract. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so this we is, never used as much money as we had budgeted for. But yeah. this is not a retainer. This is a this is an, open, an open arrangement so we can tap services as necessary. Yeah. Right. And our yes. acknowledgement that we're going to pay her uh, 125 now. Yes. That hour. And it's probably a good rate right now before the prices go up. By the way, could someone tell me what's Cindy's particular skill set profession? She used to be, she's a recovering lawyer. What she now them? works for this other firm, and she was did a lot of contact, contract negotiation work with okay. school So systems. she was a labor lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, okay, great. And she's an accountant type too. Yeah, she's, she's, really she's smart. pretty versatile. Yeah, okay. So she knows personnel issues. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's okay. really level, and she used to chair the Montclair School Board, so she knows and dealt with union negotiations, so she'd be really skilled. Yeah, she's a nice person to work with. She's pleasant too. Yeah. And she knows her stuff. Good package. All right, so I think there's a motion on the table, and I'll call this if you seconded it, to sign the contract to engage services as needed with RK, RK Smith, um, AKA uh, Cindy Kevin and Warren. Aye. Everybody, anything else before we vote? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, we should, if we're, uh, if we mean it about getting started, let's figure out when we're going to have our hour conversation about personnel. I think it's going to have to be um, maybe September 13th. 13th. I think we're going to have other things to do on August 23rd before the meeting. So can we plan on 6 o'clock yeah. on September 13th? Have a personnel policy meeting from six to seven. Without Cindy, because that's yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. He's not. Did you have something? Did you have anything else? No, I was going to ask you. Can I go? You can go. Thank you very much. Thanks, you let him just walk out. Out. <laughs> uh, Alfred and I are meeting with Doug Lilly tomorrow morning. I've already spoken to it. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, let's talk about He's not clear fire department. Um, at our last meeting, we agreed to accept the proposed language as um, written by the by the East Mount Clear Select Board. What we didn't do was to do it in a form of a motion. So all we really got to do is ratify what we had put in the minutes and turn it into a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And then we have a meeting, our quarterly, or not, not so quarterly, fire department meeting is this Thursday oh, at... Yeah. Um, and I won't be there, but will we everybody else? Are we have a quorum? Well, we need to have a quorum or there's no point in doing it. I can be there. What time is it? 7 p.m. at where? At the fire station. Do you want me to stop by and pick you up or something? Is that possible? That'd be great. Can I ride with you? Yep. Yeah. So you want to worry about driving? Are, are you going, Sharon? Are you, you would go right from work or would you? I can come and get you. That's probably Maybe easier, easier for, you than for me than for the right? lights. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, thank you. Thank seven, you for going on. I'm sorry, I will not be able 7 to be there. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. at the fire station. Yeah. Pick up Rick. Yep. Yeah. And um, thank you. Thank you. 
<laughs> I think what's going to happen is so the like fire department is going to tell us why this isn't a good idea or oh, whatever. I thought, I thought they liked the language that East Montclair. This was the fire. Well, they might like the language that East Montclair select board did, which was kind of wordsmith what we had. Right. It's so those two select boards are in agreement, is my point. So I think, as Toby mentioned last meeting, um, that the, there was always the ability of the voters to pull that out, but this is really <coughs> a conscious effort yeah. on our part <coughs> to make this part of the regular town meeting. We used to do this all the time. It was part of, it was part of the morning. It just always was. And, and there was I, never, I was. I spoke with a member of the East Fire Department. I'm going to leave the names out of it. And, Southport, and I let them know that. You know, we do this for Woodbury all the time. It should not be seen as a threat, it's seen as an opportunity yeah. to educate us on what a great job you're doing. And I said the problem might be that the person shy and might not handle a standing ovation very well because that's usually what happens. Yeah, so, and um, it gives people an opportunity people. to see some of the people from the fire department that they yeah. probably most likely, hopefully, are never going to see. It's yeah. very personal. And it's really, a, it's yeah. just really a good PR thing to do this at town meeting on the floor. Yes, sometimes people aren't supportive, but we do it with the library. It's a big this is the biggest budget item outside right. of out of town budget. budget. Right. People stand up, even if you have people that don't like it, there are a lot that stand up too. Right. That's the thing yeah, is it's really good PR and they should be mm -hmm. grateful for the PR, you know, the positive PR. Okay. So and I, I this fire department person mentioned that uh, due to some of the ARPA funding or something, they, they they actually wound up with something on the order of 15 grand, oh. which helped buy down the cost of the ambulance service. Nice. And so the ambulance costs, they were either the same as last year or a little bit less. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's good news. That is good. All right, did next we up. We did. We did? We did. Okay. Yeah. All right, next up is um, Washington Central Unified Union School District. Um, there was this process that was supposed to be in place. Um, we had some back and forth with the school board, which you all have seen. I had requested that they send us the letters of interest from the two candidates that they had, and they have not done so. Um, which are all public record. Which they're all public record. And it's supposed to be in consultation with the select board. Um, it didn't, unfortunately, work out in a way that I would have hoped that they would have engaged us in making a decision and being a transparent and open process. Did they make a decision? I don't know. Uh, well, they said they were going to. Uh, their their meeting is the 11th, whenever that right. is. Is that Wednesday? Yeah. So I think in our minutes tonight, we know who the two candidates are. Um, there's Chris Catteret, who used to be on the elementary school. My understanding is Chris Catteret is no longer. Well, that's what I'm not sure. We never got official. He felt, he, he told the board he had a conflict of interest. Okay. He never officially withdrew. Nobody told us officially that he withdrew. So it might, you know, it's Chris Catteret and Maggie Weiss. Um, he, he smoked, she's East Callis. I'm not exactly sure where Chris lives, but. Same, Max Graver. Same room? Max Graver, oh, Max same area. Okay. Same area. So I would suggest that we make a motion, have it in our minutes, which we can, I can send Kate, when Katie gets the minutes done for tonight, we can send them the motion from our minutes. Um, we have nothing to review to know. So the motion would be we, we request the Union School Board, the Consolidated District School Board, to consult with us? No, I think we made a motion on who we I mean, no, they're not, they won't do it. They've already said well, that. Well, that's our, still our request, is it not? Yeah. I mean, that's what the statute expects, that there's in consultation, right. which means we didn't have a conversation with the board, mm -hmm. not with Denise or Sharon or Mark or me. I would, I would rather go in John's direction, too. Rather than making a recommendation when we haven't been at all engaged in the process, um, if, if we want to be engaged, which is a different question, but if we do want to be engaged, which I understand it is the you know, general sense of the, of the board that we do, then if we do, then I would say 
let's object to the process, and that's what we put on the record and report, mm -hmm. report back, yeah. is that... Yeah. We were not consulted. We were not consulted. We have... We, we feel like they did not follow the process as yeah. outlined. Well, that we... And the, well, we don't know what... The, there is no process outline, which is kind of the problem. Well, yes. it is. It's well, in statute. It, it no, it says, it says consult. That, that is, but, but come on. Because the word consult is not a process. They took the word consult, made a process that has a little pinpoint where they send us some names and we say, well, and they ask us, what do we think? If did we, they do that? They did do that. If we, yes, they did. They if did. we want a different process, then we can take it upon ourselves to do the exact same, the exact same thing. Outline what process we want and tell them this will be the process for the town of Callis. Um, we'll, we'll see you next time there's an opening. Um, I, don't no. know that I, I don't know that I totally agree with that. They did not follow what's in the statute. I don't think they what? consulted with us. They, we, not, we, they, they need to consult, consult with us as a board. At a board meeting or invite us to be on their agenda. I'm they, not, they didn't either. Well, but I'm, what they did, so... No, they did not. Denise, let me finish my sentence. What they did do is send us two names. No, they did not. No, they didn't. They yes. sent an email. There they was an email yeah, exchange. Yeah. And yeah, then we but, finally got something written by an attorney before signature. No. I don't even think we were given... You didn't see that, did you? I don't you think did. we were even given the courtesy of being so, given the two names. No. Uh, where did I see the email with two names? I thought it was from Floor asking us if we had anything we wanted to weigh, if we wanted to weigh in on those two people. We absolutely got something. Somewhere in that long, am I making this up? I can't remember, I called for and asked her, and I know she said, we used the two names that Dorothy came up with, but that had nothing to do with us. I can't, that's, that's I'm trying to remember. I yeah, feel that's like, it means nothing in, in this world. I, I, tend, I tend to agree with Sharon on that, just, you know. I think we're all guessing here. I mean, we're all wondering, Sharon thinks there was, I'm looking for it. Uh, and what's the acronym I'm trying to search for? Y-C-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U-U
However, the fact that it was baked in a budget bill tells you somebody cares that much about it to get it put in the bill, yeah. and we should assume that, they're, that, that, that if that's the best they can do, they will do it again next year. Okay, so my question is, though, the budget bill didn't pass, so how is it that this what? is, if the, big, if, the big, if the big bill didn't pass, I think you told me, I didn't tell you that. No, I didn't tell you that. It's I don't, I don't know what. Yeah, so it's in a, it's in I thought you said it didn't pass. No, no, no. Wait, it's not, it, no, no. It's not codified. So the bill passed, and the language is in the bill, but it's not. Sometimes, usually, in a bill, it'll say strike what's in there now and replace it with this. Right. It doesn't say that, but it doesn't have to. It says notwithstanding any other provision of law. So even though it never gets baked into the green books, the statute, it's still the law until it sunsets next year, unless somebody does the same thing again. Does that kind of So mean? you're thinking they probably will? If we don't know. Well, I think that there's, an, I think, well, partly I'm interpreting Floor's response that said, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but Floor's, one of her emails back to you said, it's a no-brainer that a board should get to replace its own members. Yeah. So there's that sentiment that is out there, and if the school boards and their very active lobby group, if that's their approach, then, I don't hear you no more about yeah, this than um, I do, yeah. then, they are, then they are going to be working that agenda, and maybe next time it'll have enough support to actually be codified and not sunset next year. Anyway, all I'm saying is we shouldn't, we shouldn't assume it's going to go. It's away. very clear that this is not a collaborative project. We saw this behavior from the East Montpelier Fire Department. We'd be outraged. I'm outraged. Absolutely, it's not. It's basically we, all we need to do is consult. Uh, you know, well, telling us when they're going to vote on something is not. That's, that's that, that you could tell any member of the public. I don't see any higher level of engagement of our town legislative body. So we should be over the citizens. I think we need well, to we should be specific though. What I think is it we, we want? I think we need to be specific in our minutes to say that we're um dis not maybe not dis Do we have Jim write a letter? I mean, we, mm, we can write our own letter. We can just say we're a guest. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we can I'd like to have it so that it's in our minutes tonight so that we can give them those minutes for their meeting on Wednesday unless Right. We have not been consulted. No, we, have not. we need to see, you know, we need to be consulted with, we need to see resumes, we need to see, you know, we our, need to see our, it our to make a decision. It would have been a collaborative, it would have been nice to have had a collaborative process in which the two boards work together simultaneously mm -hmm. to engage in interviews and work together to find the best representative for the town of Callis because it's the town of Callis seat representing our residents, our taxpayers. Does that make sense? I think that we could say that the select board, um, the select board is of the view that, that we were not consulted in a meaningful way and had no, right. had no meaningful opportunity to whatever the words were, you know, weigh in and present a recommendation and that we will be, if we care a lot, I think we should say we will be working on outlining the, what a consult process looks like from our perspective and we look forward to improving communication in the future. So I think something like that, Katie, do you have enough in the, for the minutes that you could read back between what Sharon and I said? Yes, I was just yes, I was just finishing up. Um, I have a kind of long piece on it, but the, which I'll edit later. But the last part that you both just said, it would have it would have been nice to have a collaborative process where the two boards work together to find the best representative for the town of Callis, for our seat, for our town of Callis residents and taxpayers. The select board was of the view that we were not consulted in a meaningful way and had no meaningful opportunity to weigh in and present a recommendation. We'll be working on outlining what a consult process looks like from our perspective, and we look forward to communicating about it. 
I, I don't think we should say it would be nice. I think we'd be a lot more firm than that. <laughs> yeah. I said a statute dictates and we, we, we need to be a part of this decision consulted. making, consulted, and that means, and that means, you know, involved in, the, in yeah. getting the yeah. information, getting the. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we could have made that change. Yeah, not, yeah, it would have it would have been nice. Yeah, it would have been nice. Sounds too nice. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a little just, weak. Yeah. So we okay. So what what Rick said to change it from it would have been nice. It, 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 should, mm -hmm. it should say the board should have been consulted. I, well. The, the reason I would stay away from should have is according to who. I would I would just right. frame what our expectation of the word consult is. Yeah, in our view, consultation means communication. Yeah, yeah. means collaboration. Means, means and then everything else. Working a, 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 a meaningful collaboration. Yeah. A meaningful okay. collaboration. Yeah. It means communicating and working together. Okay. Okay, so that, so I made the motion. I'll make, I'll make that motion. Well, is it a motion or is it just in the minutes? I think it's, um, I think well, we should, I think the motion has to go. Okay. I think we had, I think we should vote on it. Sure. Yeah, then, I think we should get really clear about exactly what we're going to say. No, question So somebody good. else can second it and then Katie can read it back again and we can tweak it. You already made the motion? No, I made a motion. Somebody else needs to second it. Okay. So Katie, making it <laughs> have more teeth. The select board. Is the motion, Denise Willer made a motion to um, create a statement to communicate with, what, what is the motion to? Yeah, it's a motion to authorize. Who's writing the letter? No, we're not doing a letter. We're just going to put it in the minutes right now so we can get it to them. Well, if it's a minute, it's in the minutes. Right. Um, I think the motion They're not going to read our minutes, though. I'm not clear what we're doing with it. So just FYI, I just sent Lauren an email. I took the liberty as one elected <laughs> member of this board, not representing the full board, but saying, I floor. I and the rest of us are still waiting to hear from the WCUUSD board, um, waiting to hear the request to meet with the Cal Select Board in consultation on the two candidates for the open Cal seat. Do you plan on inviting our board to the upcoming meeting, placing the consultative discussion on the meeting agenda as a line item? I have, I have not seen anything. What am I missing? Question mark. Please RSVP John. So, Did you already send that? Yeah, there. that's from me. You guys are welcome. Yeah, I'll send sure. something too, because I think we'd want to have information in advance of that meeting. Yeah, well, and that's, that's 48 hours from now. Yeah. yeah. So, in the, mean, in the meantime, I think we just we need to make a really strong statement, motion, something in our minutes to show our disappointment, displeasure. displeasure. If, if all we're going to do is if all we're going to do is reflect the discussion in the minutes, I don't, I don't think that, I don't know what I we're going to do. I think we need to send a letter. Yeah, if we're going to send a communication, agree, that would be the motion, and then we have to wordsmith that really carefully. Okay, so. Well, actually, first of all, I agree that a motion has to be something we're going to do, at least, whatever it is. In other words, it could be a motion to reflect that the minutes reflect the sense of the board, that, but no one's going to read that. Well, that's I think the question saying. is, do you want, don't you want to somehow communicate to them? Yeah. 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 You want to draft a letter, Mark? I think that someone, no, I don't want to do it because I'm not, I don't know enough about this yet. I'm not trying to get out of work, but I don't understand this relationship at all. So it's, I think it's someone be authorized to write a letter, the sense of which is what she expressed in the minutes, and then so write the letter you know, at this Late date, yes, 48 hours late. before the meeting. I, it's I'm not going to rush to get a letter out to them. That's I think we I mean. wait to that for the see what process. They still have 48 hours. I sent an email, give them a heads up that we're waiting. That's and if we don't know. hear back from them, even if they do invite us, my complaint will be short, short notice. We wouldn't do that to you. I, and so, so we send a letter. Um, that, let's wait to our next meeting. We'll send and we'll find out what. 
process or lack of process was unveiled and they will respond and react to that. So then maybe we don't have a motion, but I'd like to have something strongly worded in our minutes that I can send to that whole email group ahead of time. Well, you? the select board had a discussion tonight expressing its displeasure. My understanding, your understanding is that John, as one member, sent an email already communicating that. But no, I think no. we just put something in our minutes no. showing our displeasure. I think we have to. No, or, I, I mean, it's no. got to go in the minutes because we're talking about it now. Absolutely, and it will, and it should. I'm, what I'm not okay with is just sending the minutes to the whole group. If we're going to communicate with them and try to make a statement, it should be in a letter that we put thought into. Yeah, Forget yeah, about Wednesday sorry. night. It's not about Wednesday night. It's yeah. about the process, yeah. and it should come on, on our letterhead, and we should all sign it, mm -hmm. and, it and it can be after. Yeah. But just sending us the minutes to me is... This is moving forward. It's frankly just well, kind of whining. When we so it's going to be reflected. Out. This discussion is going to be reflected as all our discussions in the minutes, yeah. as Denise said. Yeah. And then we're going to let's put this on the agenda next, yeah. the next meeting to see what happened. And we'll do a debrief. Maybe we'll invite Floor. Why don't we? I would ask that we invite Floor, the chair of the school board, to attend our next select board meeting. We we placed you on the agenda, yes, and we'd like for you to explain to us the consultative discussion that was had. Now maybe, or we maybe that. we had it. Maybe something happens in the next forty-eight hours, and then we'll explain to her that maybe our simple disappointment is short notice, let's not do that again. Or nothing happens, and we can have a, a larger uh, discussion. But we will invite her, or the vice chair, or, rep, or someone who's authorized to represent the board, or the whole board, for that matter. I, I, like that idea. I think that's actually the best. I, again, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing we can do now. Yeah. Yeah. Wednesday, no, the Wednesday night ship is sealed. Yeah. I think putting it could be in face to face with what our meeting here. I, I, I like that part of it, yeah. mm -hmm. confronting them face to face. Mm -hmm. But I, I think well, well, because there might be some people on the board there who say, you know, they're right. We can do what we're well, doing. Well, we still can attend the meeting on the 11th. Yeah. Any one of us can. Mm -hmm. We can also the still. The 11th is, what, Wednesday? Yeah. Well, we also, I'll go with you, Denise, if you want to go. We also can still send a letter to I'll the I'll entire board. Sure. And that, I'll and join you guys too. Sending a letter to the entire board that is well crafted and succinct is a stronger step to take than sending them a copy of our minutes, particularly particularly if they're down to one candidate well, anyway. That? <coughs> right. But that doesn't take care of the problem of right. putting something out there immediately to show our displeasure so that the full board says, oh, maybe we didn't do this well, the way we should have. We can want to show up. I think if you're willing to show up, that's enough. In other words, you had the discussion. If one or two of you show up, you can say, we've talked about this as a board, and we really don't think this is adequate. They probably wouldn't want to speak. That's how they right. right. yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, and you know, the fact that Denise and or I or both show up, um, that we don't represent the board. We're individually, just like Florida doesn't represent the board, just like and we would need to make that clear. She said, oh, here you are. No, we need yeah. to, the whole board needs to, and, we, and they need notice. Right. They have lives too. Your board members have to schedule meetings, they have to get notice. You have someone wanting to talk. So. Oh. Wait a minute, Let's, anybody else on the board before I? Sure. Lisa, you want to make a comment? Yeah, I do, because I got to a lot of school board meetings. Um, so I just want to give you the heads up that they take pub public comments at the beginning of the meeting, um, towards the beginning of the meeting. They only have 15 minutes set aside for it, and they only give you 90 seconds to speak. So um, you're likely to be um, you're likely to be acknowledged, but you might want to have something prepared so that you can get your thoughts clearly across because you only get 90 seconds. Um,
I am. Um, and the issue is um, it's when the buyer's attorney did the title search, um, came, saw that the, our driveways cross a little chunk of land that's um, a town common or whatever that's owned by the town. And the title insurance company, as far as I understand, will not issue the insurance unless there's a written agreement that we have the right to cross across that, that little piece of town land, just like a right of way across anybody else's land if you had something. So their lender is not going to lend them the money to purchase um, unless they can get title insurance. And the title insurance company says there needs to be a written agreement for us to cross property that is not owned by ourselves. Is that at all clear? Did you say easement? A right of way. So, so just for clarification, every near every road in a town of Callis is an easement over private property. We own the easement, and it gives us prescribed rights to maintain a road for the safe passage, etc. So I don't know, is this different? Yes. What's different. going on in East Callis? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Sharon was going to explain that to us. Okay, this is a green piece of land that appears to be part of Seaver and Mary's land and appears to be part of the land of my house if you were just a common person driving by. But the town owns, um, Seaver can probably tell better, but 30 feet, I have to cross over 20 yeah. feet, 30 feet from the end of my driveway when my driveway goes across. The green part um, from the front of Marion Sievers' house, there's 30 feet out to the to the road that the town owns. That uh, both Mary and Siever and my parents and myself have maintained because we mow it and take care of it. But it's a I forget what the name of it is that they call it, but it's a uh, not a park but a common, I guess. So it's not it's not the road, it's not the right of way to the road, it's not the edge of the road. It is a substantial piece of green that we drive across. So I know where Marion Sievers' house is. Which one is yours? Is that the one that has the little fence around the park? It's set way back. It's set way back. The one from that it's, room. It's right against. We that actually road. drive. We drive up the same portion, and then it, it goes off to Marion's house, or it goes straight into um, my garage. A lot of people think that my garage is Marion Sievers. Right. So this, so this, this is holding up. Holding up we were supposed to be in the beginning of July. So it's holding up the house. Of the, house. The, buyers are the buyers are camped out. out. Um, you know, they have roots, you know, they have in, roots the in the town of Calais. I believe they still want to purchase the house, but, but, the house, but we need to we have, need a, have a resolution um, before, um, anybody, before anybody, 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 any lender is going to lend on her to house. No, I get that part of it. Um, it has nothing to do, Lisa just said this, it has nothing to do with the town road. The issue can be summed up no. in this way. What you would think is people's front lawns that their driveway comes across is not their lawn. It turns out it's, it's a, by all appearances, it is town <laughs> property. And so, and there is no deeded easement for people to leave their own property and for their driveway to cross the town property to get to what we all understand to be the town's road. That's the issue. So do we have the authority Correct. without public notice to grant These a are... property right? Uh, I'm not, I'm, I personally have no problem with it, but from a legal standpoint, These we're gonna get into legalities. I don't know if our passing a resolution is a legal mechanism to grant you that. That's not short what you're asking. They're not asking that. John, I thought she just said she wanted a resolution from the source. She wants a resolution to the issue. Which means we have they to investigate. Oh, a resolution of the issue. Right. Uh, uh, which uh, means we have to check and see about an easement. Yeah. So sure. what I'm yeah. asking, again, what I'm asking for is just that you guys say, let me know what your questions are. I know what my questions are, and I'll come back and say, okay, I've answered. Working with Jim, we've answered all the questions. Okay. Here is the recommendation. Sure. Yeah. Good. We're not going to. And not, I think not, that. Wait, Lisa, can you there's there's no way we're going to resolve it tonight, and Lisa, there's no way that we're going to resolve it by 
whatever. I'm not even remembering what the closing date was, but Gloria let me know. It's not going to be resolved by then. But I also want no, to I know that. I also want to give but she did. I want to give Mary and Steve a she, chance to speak. Yes, but I was just going to say, I think that um, I'm guessing it's the lady over here that received a document prepared by an attorney. I can't understand what you said. I didn't understand what you said. The attorney, the attorney that is representing me in the sale of the property has drafted a document and sent it to somebody on the select board um, mm -hmm. for them to have. I don't know if they've shared that with everybody. Yes, we have, we have that. We have a responsibility to do our due diligence and check this out and check in with the town's attorney. So that's the process. Exactly. I didn't expect. I didn't expect it was going to be resolved tonight. Okay. I just want was hanging out because I wanted. To, if you had questions, wanted to be able to share some answers. Okay. So we're going to let Mary and Seaver have a chance to speak at this point. Um, yes. I never knew what the problem. It never been a problem for me. But you know, they brought it up you know, during the sale of the property. It'd be great to have a deed in right away across the property. So I guess urgent for me, but at least it's more yeah. So I guess one of my questions then is if we get this easement for Lisa's property, does it also then provide an easement for Mary and Seaver and whoever else? Well, we have to do individual easements if this is in fact necessary. You know, that's exactly the kind of thing that I think her report back to us should resolve. In other words, I don't think we need to deal with this tonight other than a motion. I guess I'll make a motion that we ask authorize Sharon, authorize Sharon to talk to our city attorney town and attorney. report back to us. Town attorney. Town attorney. I apologize. You live in town now. Mark. Come on, Mark. I keep telling him we're not the city council. This is not so. San Francisco, brother. <laughs> Boy, do I know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's, and like it, um, that we authorize Sharon to talk to our city attorney and to bring back to us a recommendation for action at our next meeting. Yeah. And Katie, can you make sure it says town attorney in there? Town attorney. Yes. Okay. I'll, make, I'll second that. Everybody, any more questions? It's common spots. Mary, do you have anything more to say? No. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll okay, let's, let's vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, and if you guys, if questions occur to you, send them to me so that I can make sure that I'm incorporating everybody's questions. In I have one question which is not important, but if you happen to find out, I'm curious, where the hell this piece of land? Why we own it? Well, well, the, oh yeah, okay, but don't. We, the, well, here, the, I know the answer to that. Um, well, no, I don't know the full answer. So the, the evidence that we do is what I sent you guys as screenshots from Parcel Viewer. Yeah. Parcel Viewer is great, but, but not conclusive. Right. And so to get to the bottom of who really owns it would require going, and they, my understanding is they've gone pretty far back to try to sort out, does the town actually own it or does it really belong to these guys? And the title or the deeds don't lead you to a conclusive uh, resolution, which is not uncommon in Vermont at all yeah. and that's why surveyors have a job you would have to bring a surveyor and go even further back figure out where the stone walls used to right. be and get to the bottom of it so so anyway that's only half an answer mark and, right. and one of the questions that i have is that i'll ask jim is you know well i have a bunch of questions you guys send me your questions we have other things okay. to do for what it's worth i think the it would be great if we could find a way to move forward on this in a reasonable time yeah, period. Exactly. If, if Jim can help yeah. us do that. Yeah. I guess I'd like to see all, I'd like to be able to see all the questions and then the answers. Yeah. Yeah. Denise, that is not gonna happen. I'm gonna have a conversation with yeah, Jim. Mark, We're gonna Mark, randomly Mark, figure out. That's what we need to see. Well, I think just your report back. Is yeah, fine. my report back is at you have absolutely, yeah, but I will be working with Jim yeah. verbally. Yeah, I mean, I think that, let's see what Jim says, uh, how, how you resolve, how, what this land is, how you resolve it. Well, and, and, and I'm going to 
digest and report back on what Jim says. Right. If that's not satisfactory, then I'm not the right person to take it. Oh, I, it satis to me, it's satisfactory. And besides, if it isn't satisfactory, we can deal with it next meeting. I mean, if we're not satisfied, we will. Well, yeah, because we, we may have some more questions. Yeah. Okay. I will. Well, I will send you something. In, I will send you something in advance. Yeah, great. What, as I have done before, and what I have done before is ask. Here's my report. If you have questions that are not answered, let me know. Yeah. Okay. So that I can do more research. And that's what I want to. What I want to see. Denise, yeah, great. When I've asked for that before. You ignore me. Well. Okay. Yes. All right. So. This is not that complicated. Yeah, is there, there a is there's a motion on the floor. Are, there, there apparently is a piece of land. I thought we voted to we our share. Okay, great. Yeah. We did? Good. We moved. We moved. Second, I'll second. I thought we already did that. We, we already did it? Yeah. Okay. Katie's nodding. Yeah, Katie's nodding that we're done. Okay. All right, Katie, you wanted to give us a quick website update? Uh, of that. One, one minute here. Um, a couple of months ago, the board had voted um to approve me to do up to 30 hours with the um which at twenty dollars an hour to work with the town clerk um and assistant town clerk after the website had received an update um a couple of months ago and when uh gov office did that update it kind of screwed up where things were pointing to and it was a bit disorganized links weren't working so i wanted to let you all know that i used exactly those 30 hours um, and all one of the cool things I thought you guys might like is that all of the select board minutes back to 2004 are now searchable. I've moved them to the clerk share. So anyone in the town clerk's office can can go in there and do a search for content. So if we wanted to look up horses, we would receive, you know, the results of the content of all the minutes going back to 2004. Um, Basically, it was like tidying and reorganizing in consultation with the town clerk's office. We met a few times over the last couple of weeks, and it's where we wanted to get it to. The, I wanted to return, and I could tell you more about the details if anyone wants to know. You can also just call me and we could chat about it. It's mostly boring stuff like changing file names and whatnot. Um, let's see, someone's come, joining our meeting. Um, what remains is that the zoning section is is not optimally organized and we didn't get as far as changing the content within there um jeremy and i have talked about the possibility of he and i meeting virtually to do some training about the back end of the website um because i've taken all the trainings in order to do all this that he and i could chat much more briefly than him taking the trainings that that the company offers and some other like Jeremy has I Jeremy and Barbara both have ideas about further organizational things that could happen. And the board had made a motion authorizing the possibility of extending the 30 hours, which came to $600 up to $1,000. And so I told Barbara and Jeremy that I would like to return to the board to let you know what had been done and resolved and to ask you before continuing on whether that is something that you would like to see happen to continue organization of the website within the scope that we talked about originally. Okay, so what I heard you say, Katie, was you've done, you've spent the 30 hours that we originally authorized up to $600. There's still more work to do, and you're asking us to approve an additional 400, which totals $1,000, to do the additional work as needed. Is that correct? Um, the original motion, was for 30 hours at $20 an hour for a total of $600 with the possibility of extending up to $1,000. So when I updated Jeremy when he started, because we didn't know kind of what his background in tech and IT and what his facility would be with um, his tasks on uploading stuff to the website and using the website to do what he needs to do. Um, in that meeting, we discussed like, wanting there to be a certain number of hours to get the zoning part of the website more user friendly for um, the office staff to be sending links that make sense. And specifically also like, or it takes a lot of clicks for us to be able to share information about um, about Callis. That was another area that that the town clerk's office wanted to see more better organized for end user um, access. So I'm I'm I've done those 30 hours, but the original motion allowed that additional 20 hours. So I'm here to see if that's the board's pleasure for me to do, um, or if you would like me to, yeah, what, what the board thinks about that. What I said was you're asking us to authorize an additional 
$400 so you can continue the work. So moved. Uh, I, think, I think it was already authorized. Well, let's, let's just do it again just to be really clear. Okay, I so understand. You said that we had authorized 600 and you came back, you would come back to us to do an additional 400 to equal 1,000. So that's what we're, we're, we're authorizing. Gotcha. And John made the motion. Motion for a second. Okay. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Thank you. Please give me a ring if anyone has comments or suggestions. I'd love I'd love to hear if anyone ever wants something done there. I'd like, yep. I'd like to have a website like so how they use it a lot when they have a construction site. Okay. Um all right. So we are on to we, we did we spent a lot of time on the rules of procedure um back in March, went through them pretty thoroughly. Yeah, we I, to, I don't know if folks have looked at it, they're all incorporated. I'm not ready to sign off yet. I need to look at right. it again. I think I need to look at it again. Mark and Mark knows nothing about that. She sent them to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Did you I don't look think out? we're ready to sign off on them yet. But okay. we just let's want keep it moving now. I'm yeah. here. Let's, let's not let's take them up at the next meeting. Well, I'm gonna, well, I'm going to suggest that we meet at six, so we can do that. We need to um, have further discussion about. An evaluation that we did recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to suggest we meet at six on the 23rd. Okay. Right. Before our regular meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And then you had another thing about ECCT. Yes. Yeah. This is just an update. <laughs> a couple of you know this already. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we, we, I can't remember the date exactly. You guys authorized me um, to. Work with EC, you authorized an enhancement request uh, for ECCT to the Vermont Community Development Program. We heard back this week that, that they are not approving the enhancement request at this time. Okay. It wasn't closed door, it was a knock at the door at this time. There are people that have problems, yes. But yeah, I just wanted to close the list to let you guys know about that. Okay. Um, do you want me to speak on my other business items? Oh, you're okay. Fine. Uh, I have a number of amendments to the July 12th minutes, which are the ones that we approved for purposes of the animal ordinance, okay. noting that we could come back and amend. I'm not going to clear the procedures to amend. We would just call, recall those minutes and uh, make a motion to amend the minutes. Okay. So, all right. So, I, so, so that would be something we do. Yeah, that's something we would just do as a regular. Okay. Look at the minutes. I don't think okay. we'll do that tonight. I did look at it. That's fine. It was July 12th minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, so. Right, so and if you have agenda items, if you can send them to me ahead of time, I can make sure we. These are just quick other business. Um, I put two, I, I no, I made a folder. I did this a couple, maybe three weeks ago, but I, I don't think I mentioned it. So in our Google folder, I made a folder called Select Board Pending, and I put in there um, a curb cut folder rubric, and I put in everything I had on curb cut. Our, our current policy, the statute, um, the, forms. the form that I made, something else, I think. Um, the, the, the standard, the standard, 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 standard yeah, I put, there's like yeah. five things in there. Um, and then the other Select Board Pending folder is a conflict policy, our conflict policy, the VLCT's materials, there might be a couple other things in that as well. I just wanted you guys to know that they're there, those other things that we talked about that we'll update. Um, I'm not seeing it, by the way. I don't see it. All right, so maybe that's what that's 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 I think I did, but I will double check. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm sharing. I'm not sure I'm yet using my phone. My, my I will make sure, I will work with Casey to make sure that if she can see it, then everybody else should be able to. She has access. to write, and you have to have access, which I think you do. Right. If yeah, you know, access, access. I can. I can help with I that. will work with Katie on it. And then my other thing was mass again, Denise, and what's, what's Yeah, that? I don't you know what. I think we need sure. to take it up as yeah. it comes up. Yeah. You know, I mean, unfortunately, things are getting hot again, even if, even in Lola Vermont, which did such a great job. You know, it's heating up again, and we need to be thinking about this. And I listen periodically to the governor's press conferences and get updates from Vermont. Whatever. 
going to start giving out things so, so should be aware. So I listened to the governor, it might be a week and a half ago, and he was asked whether he anticipates issuing a directive on, you know, social distancing and all that stuff. And he said, well, we're at 85% vaccinated. That's what he first said. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't anticipate that, but you know, you know, we'll see how things evolve. Well, it turned out that 85% have had at least their first vaccine. Right, so he that's got the difference. Caught on that one. That's a big difference. And then the the second part is, you know, I actually had someone read to me over the phone. We were talking about the Provincetown situation, and there was a guy who got, or there was a guy who got. Went to Provincetown, thought it was the safest. These are all the lefties, so master type people, and they all got their vaccine. They were like 95, 98% vaccinated, and it was raining. So everybody went into this bar, and this guy started feeling lousy. And he's like, oh, it's weird, cold. He goes to the doctor, he tested positive for COVID. It was and, he said, yeah. and he said he was so sick. You know, when you get the flu so bad, he said, I wish I were dead. And his doctor said, you got a mild case. Yeah. So that's what's and going on with fully vaccinated people. And what's going to happen and is... careful people who got too close. So oh, it's, it's, and what's going to happen is this is going to then mutate into an even stronger strain. Yes, that's right. That's right. right. So yeah. unfortunately, all of us who got vaccinated, it, yeah. maybe it's not it's strong true. enough and we're going to need boosters. But anyways, we don't have to make that decision tonight. Yeah. So it, it is on everybody's radar. Right well, yes. I there was a great article in the Times yesterday. It's basically, what's the state of what we know now about all of this? The Times was very, I mean, they even mentioned Vermont. They said, if you're in Vermont and you want to go out to eat with other people who are vaccinated, you probably can do that without a mask. If you're in, uh, you know, some southern state, no, you're, you shouldn't. I think at the moment, it's pretty clear that you can get COVID if you're vaccinated. Mm -hmm. You won't die. You'll Probably. just get sick. Mm -hmm. And no, less than one, way less than 1%. I mean, it's way down there. The number, in fact, minuscule numbers of people who have been vaccinated have died. It's, and in fact, very tiny percent are hospitalized. However, what we don't know you know the, the whole problem of long-term effects, um, which are long really that's long the haul stuff is really miserable. That's really scary. What we don't yes. know is whether you, if you are vaccinated and you get it, are you less likely to develop long haul symptoms? Yeah. Yeah. We don't know the answer. There's, to there's so many unknowns across the board with this, but do we want to move on? I, I do know FYI, I'm going to be, I will be remote on the 20th. That's the day I need to end to go to college. Okay. I will do my best to be at least here for the entire day. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. I think, you know, the real issue for us, Denise, is, well, of course, any of us can start wearing masks anytime we want. That's right. But I think, and I don't feel the need to do it yet here, but I think the real, the real is the rubber will hit the road, Denise, and, you know, theoretically, as chair, you're a rule maker as to public hearings. When do we start saying, you got to wear a mask if you're going to Or when do we, or, and we may or when the, we go remote? Right. I mean, I think it would be a, it would be a board decision, because I would not make that decision on my own. No, but but I think, at some, if it gets really bad, we may have to go back to all remote meetings yeah. again. But we can't do that if the powers that be don't authorize that. Somebody has got to physically right. be yeah. here. We're, right. we're not running right. the show, and so that members of the public have an opportunity to show up in person. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't know why anybody would if there's there, a It may problem. well be that what's going to happen is, I mean, it's happened in Germany and Israel and a few other countries, is that there will be a booster. Right, I know the the boosters are the same as the, no. as the same shot. So, it's not like all we would all have to do is go back to the drugstore and get another shot. <coughs> but that's not <coughs> authorized yet. Right, exactly. That's part of 
what they need to get working on. So we want to just, in, in light of that conversation, that this may go to a point like I escalate up to where we start masking here, and you just touch them on by masks like the hospital has them and for people that were we to show up. We've got we've right got we've got a supply of the of it. the throwaway ones. That's what I mean. So we yeah. would have it if someone shows up without one. We should bring them to the meetings. We yeah. should when that happens. Right, when that happens. Absolutely. Right. And we will right. and we and if that happens then we will post on the door that masks are required. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and I and I my mind was headed where you just said to me, it's like that we that we go largely remote and maybe there's two of us here. Yeah. Yeah. Um and if that's the tone, if that if that's the tone we're setting, then you know, I mean, we're, we don't have very many people coming now. No. And, you know, we have more people on Zoom than we do in the room generally. So I think that's an easy, easy place for us to go. And we don't have to wait for permission if we decide we want to. That's right. right. I mean, that's right. right. I mean, we can make that policy on our own. What we can't do is to say we're not doing any in person meetings and right. go back to all Zoom. We can't do that without right. yeah. powers of right. being. Right. Okay, can we move on? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. A volunteer volunteered to do some wee whacking and mowing. Is that is that all you had? Sure, I'm sorry. Hmm? Was that everything you had? Yeah, no. Um, okay. And there was some damage done to some of the paint and along the outside on the bottom, and they got a little carried away with the wee whacking. So Cliff contacted Grady Fair, the one who did the painting, and he loves this building. He does. And he said we love him. Right, he said he would do the work at no charge. Oh. The only thing he would charge for is materials, and that is likely to be maybe five hundred to a thousand dollars. And our policy wow, says that's that much damage. Well, for the for the materials, if he has to buy new pieces of wood or new oh, sand, oh, you know, sand or whatever, I mean, it's probably going to cost. Well, I, way I don't less. want him working for free. It's like they were out. I don't want him working for free. I want him to be compensated. Well, we could do that. After the fact, we find out how much. But the, our policy is anything over five thousand dollars, we have to go out to bid. This is five hundred dollars, maybe a thousand at the most. Yes, the most. So can we just authorize because it's not really? I think we just authorize for you to go ahead and yeah. made a very generous yeah. offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And tell them keep track of his hours. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can ask him to do that, and then if we. We can send them a stipend or something. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree with John too. All right, do we want to do anything else or are you ready to be done? Let's get out of here. Okay. Okay. What does it mean? You, you've authorized the painter. Is his name Grady, did you say? Grady Thayer, T H A Y E R. Thank you. Okay. And Katie, um, will you be available to zoom in to the meeting with the fire department on Thursday? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Would you like me to set up a link for it, Denise, or do you think that someone in that I don't, department will? I don't know that we'll have anybody. I mean, we're, there's going to be three of us in person, um, so I think we're covered. All right, so I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, all in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Orca. Thank you, Jim. 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 Thank you,